Hello everyone and welcome to my Scarlet and Violet buy list. You are here for competitive cards. What should you buy if you are heading into this new format? Well, I'm here to tell you everything. My name is Rahul Reddy and today we're going to be looking at the competitive buy list for the Scarlet and Violet expansion. It is a new base set coming out on March 31st. If you're buying cards, please probably wait till March 31st or April 1st or April 2nd when the prices kind of drop on TCG Player. Speaking of TCG Player, I do have an affiliate link in the bio down below. All you have to do is click on that link when you go to TCG Player, and it will help out me and this channel a ton. You can also like and subscribe. And without further ado, I'm going to tell you guys what you need to buy so you don't waste your money on some silly, goofy, funny cards. I'm going to start with three categories. The must-buy cards, the spicy pickups that could be pretty decent, or, you know, I'm speculating on them. And then the please don't buy their traps. And I usually put the cards in the trap category, and I might get proven wrong some point in the future, but they usually just suck, and I think they're going to suck for a reason. Here are my headliner must-buy cards. Uh, I put Magnezone EX on here because I think the card has a lot of potential. It is a beefy um, 330 HP EX Pokemon, which is a stage 2, yes, I understand, but the damage output it has from its first attack is very good, and its second attack is also very, very powerful. And the second card on our must-buy list is Maridon EX. I have it at 4 of um, because I think that Maridon is a very crucial part of a lot of setup engines, and the card itself is inherently very powerful, being able to just pull two lightning type Pokemon out of the deck and 220 damage is not shabby at all either. Um, and then we have Gardevoir EX, which tops off our must, 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 must buy list. I guess like this is like the, the headliners of the, the show. If this is like a newspaper or a concert, that's what I'm trying to say. But um, Gardevoir EX is one of the most powerful cards coming out. Its ability is very powerful. Its attack is very powerful. And the entire evolution line, not from this set, but the Refinement Curlias are very, very powerful, as well as the Raltzes that have uh, Shadow Skip or Memory Skip or whatever. Um, the entire line is very powerful, so the card itself also becomes good. I put Gardevoir and Magnezone at three ofs because I think those cards you can kind of reasonably get away with only playing three. Uh, maybe if you want to get a fourth, you can buy a fourth just in case. But if you don't want to break the wallet or break the bank, I think you will not need more than three of either of these cards. Now, the other must-buys, I have Drifloon. This card does 30 times 30 for each damage counter on it, and you can power up the Drifloon while also putting damage counters on it with your Gardevoir. So for three Gardevoir abilities, you are swinging for 180 damage, I believe, if my math is not incorrect. And if there are any modifiers that let you buff up this guy a little bit further, there will be a tool in the next set. Hint, hint, wink, wink. This single prize Menace Balloon can do a ton of damage. Um... Obviously, it's not going to be great in every matchup, but I think because it is a common, I would just pick four of them up and just put them aside. I don't think we'll ever play more than two, but yeah. Next up is a card that's going to be insane, I think, in my opinion. It's Klefki. This card has an ability that says that no basic Pokemon have abilities while Klefki's in the active, and I think this card is going to be very, very powerful, so I would always pick up four. You might not play four in a deck, but I think four is just a very good number to pick up of this card. Um, a lot of these I'm picking up four just because like you don't know if you're going to need four. And these shouldn't be too expensive, like a couple cents here and there, probably. Um, obviously, you want to cut corners, you can drop them to three, but I think Klefki, you shouldn't. Uh, Halucha has an ability that lets you place one damage counter on two of your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. It's basically the new Zigzagoon in this format. Um, it doesn't really need much more explanation than that. I think this card can find its way into Lost Box decks, can find its way into other decks as well, uh, especially with Ting Lu in the future format. By future format, I mean next set. So you're just prepping for the future, and I think this card is overall uh, maybe like a two of at most. So if you want to cut it down to three, you can only buy three if you want to, but I have it at four. Then we have Varum and Revarum. Revarum is an interesting card because I think it's a very cool engine. Uh, you can discard a card, energy card, sorry, from your hand once per turn and fill your hand up to six total. And I think it's a very cool engine for decks that want to rely on having energies in the discard, as well as just a way to just power up your board. Um, Revarum is obviously just not a great attacker, however, so that, that might be its one downside, but I think cards that have an engine... Uh, in engine supporting ability like this are usually very powerful uh, when you're moving into the future. We have Squovet. I have two of this guy. I don't know if he's good, but I put him in the must buy list because I think if he is, he's going to be insane. Where you put your whole hand at the bottom and draw one card. Uh, so it could work with combos that rely on cards being at the bottom of your deck uh, or something of that nature. But Squovet, just a cute little bugger. Uh, then we have Indeedy. Indeedy is a once per turn. Um, for its attack, you can evolve one of your guys up. And so Indeedy could be very, very strong in decks like Guard of War or other decks that need to evolve up. Uh, and you don't mind sacrificing that one extra turn. So on your turn one, you can go ahead and get all your cards out with like Bridget or something. Not Bridget, sorry. With Gloria and Nest Balls and VIP passes and whatever. And then you go into the Indeedy and all of a sudden your um, your, your like Rots can become a Curlia or, or your... Um, Magnemite can become a Magneton, or like your Varum becomes a Revarum, and there's a, th a threat to deal with on the board, and your Indeedee is basically like worth, it's like not very difficult to pull off. 
We have four copies of Arvin, which lets you get an item and a tool. I think the support is going to be very good and niche in a lot of card decks now that tools are their own separate entity. Um, just worth it to pick up four, even if like we're never playing more than two. Um, the Beach Court is pretty much an easy four of to pick up because Lost Box deck can play anywhere from two to four, and Beach Court is just a very accessible stadium for a lot of decks. Um, Defiant Band can make its way into decks as well. I'm just picking up four as well, same reasoning. Um, 30 more damage if you are behind. Makes its way into Lost Box decks pretty easily, I think, if you really want that extra damage. Uh, Defiant Band is powerful, works in a lot of different scenarios, and I like it. Um, I don't remember the name of this item card, <laughs> I'm sorry, but Super Electric Gun or whatever it's called is really good. Um, I don't think I need to explain that one too much. It's just good. Uh, Jacques is also very good. Jacques is just get an evolution or two evolutions, put them in your hand. Just really good supporter card. I know the format is slow enough that we can play these cards, which is really nice. We don't have to just research and slam our hands away anymore. Um, we're in a position where we can build our hands. Uh, the last four cards on our must, 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 must buy list are Mesa Goza Stadium. This card can make its way into the new version of Lugia, Lost Box, whatever you need to play it in. Getting a basic Pokemon is just very important now that we don't have... Quick balls anymore. We only have nest balls and VIP passes. And I guess if you're playing Capturing Aroma, you can play that 50 50 to try to get what you need. But I think I would rather have a consistent stadium that lets me pull out a Pokemon from my deck, especially in situations where I need to attack right then and there. Miriam is very good. We're never playing four in a deck, but I think three could be possibly made into a deck. But Miriam lets you shuffle five Pokemon into your deck and then draw three. I love these draw three effects. I think they're very, very cool. Uh, and Miriam is just a very good recovery card now that Ordinary Rod is gone. And Clara is fine but miriam just seems okay for different purposes four of nest ball if you don't already have your copies nest ball is going to become a staple in a lot of decks almost every deck not replacing quick ball completely but it will make its way into some regard uh, penny also is one that i'm going to pick up it picks up a basic pokemon all cards attached puts it in your hand i think this card is very strong um for what it's supposed to do in certain decks so just snag it get out of the way here are my spicy pickups that i'm like maybe this is a good card uh, maybe it's not good right now, or like it could see play. I don't know. I need to work on these. I need to toolbox these a little bit. Spite Ops. This guy's Nightmare Fuel. Um, retreat cost, and then you do more damage based on retreat costs. Uh, seems like a decent pickup. Um, Growlithe into Arcanine. I don't know which Growlithe is optimal. Um, so I'm going to pick up both because it's probably cheap. Uh, one does a lot of damage, but it's got 70 HP, and one doesn't, but it's got 90 HP. And then Arcanine is a decent attacker, especially with fire support, if we have any fire support at some point. Um, so I think those are good pickups. I think Charcadent is, I think that's how you say his name, Charcadent, um, is good as well because it synergizes with any fire deck. Uh, Wog Trio is a funny mill deck strategy that I think could be useful. I don't know if anyone could pull off a good Wog Trio strategy because it's a stage one, but I would pick up a Wog Trio myself. Um, Dodonzo and Tatsugiri combo together just like the video game, which I really like. Dodonzo is a meme deck that does 20 or 50x each Tatsugiri in your discard. Can really power that up with a Curlia engine, um, make it go six prizes, and then just power up Dendonzo Dendonzo every turn. Uh, so I think that's cool to have that engine. Then we have Binet. The Binet line I think is very cool. I think this Binet card could be very good down the line. Right now, I don't know if it's really good, but I think Binet uh, has potential to do something. And then we have the floor just with no weakness. I guess you could play it with like Dream Ball and stuff like that, but I think it's very difficult to pull off. Uh, but I think the card is reasonable enough where it, like, it removes weakness. There's like Chandelure that I would pick it up uh, to just have. Uh, we have Great Tusk and Maridon or Karat. No, this is Maridon. This is Maridon. Wait. This is Coridon? No. Yes. I don't know. Um, but the two of them are both, I think, speculative pickups to play with some sort of fighting box deck. Could be all, all aggressive, but I don't think they'll be too expensive. I don't think they'll be good, but they could be okay. Uh, with the fighting chest plate as well, which is rock chest plate, sorry, which is down the line. I would pick up the Oinkalone line because some people seem to really like Oinkalone. I'm not a big supporter of this Oinkalone deck. I don't think it's very good. But I think people really enjoy the concept of being able to do a ton of damage for a uh, small amount of HP. Um, and then you have Sharon's Care and cards like that to just pick it up and keep recycling it for the one energy. Which makes sense. It's, it's an interesting concept. I'm just not a believer in Oinkalone um, doing the carry work. Uh, and then we have the four Picnic Baskets. Also, the basic Pokemon I'm putting are the optimal, I think, basics for these decks. Um, so I'm not mentioning them, but I think they're the optimal ones to pick up. Uh, Picnic Basket and Yellow Grunt or Star Grunt or whatever are just funny cards that could be good somewhere down the line. Just put them in the deck. It's a trap. These cards suck. Don't buy them. Please, 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 please. Uh, Arboliva, not good. Gyarados CX, not good. Quaquavel, not good. Palmont, not good. Grievart, as much as it hurts me to say because it's got B-Revenge on a Psychic type attacker, not good. Annihilate is not good. I will not be picking those up. Toxicroak is not good. Um, Iron, guys. And then one last slide, only dedicated to itself is Tandemouse. I don't think Tandemouse is good as a 70 HP stage one that does 280 max, 260 probably with the thing. It's going to be very difficult to chain these guys and you get absolutely shredded by Lost Box. Everything else on this page, I think it's self-explanatory why it sucks. 
talked a little bit fast there, but try to cram it all under 10 minutes. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. I hope you guys to see you in a different video. Peace out.